Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY, and this is Ham Radio Ventures. Today I'm going to talk about gain antennas and whether or not you need a gate antenna. So let's get going. What is a gain antenna? Well, a gain antenna has the ability to uh, direct or concentrate the power of your signal in a direction, basically, is what that is. Gain is measured in dBi, uh, decibels relative to an isotropic radiator. Isotropic, okay, let me get that right, make sure it's not right, I want somebody to correct me on that. It's also measured in dBd, and that's uh, decibels to a dipole radiator, okay? And that's what a lot of people will, most antennas are, are based against the dipole dipole as your reference and in DBD basically a, a, um, a dipole antenna is zero gain so it's you know just kind of zero all right so what is an isotropic radiator it's a theoretical single point uh, in space that radiates energy equally in all directions there but it's really not there it's it's, not, it's really fake okay <laughs> from what I read okay what is a dipole radiator uh, it's a half wave dipole uh, quarter wave on both sides and the gain for on isotropic is uh, 2.15 roughly uh, like I said before DBD uh, it's going to be zero all right and that's what like I said that's what most people or most companies will test their antennas against and then you get the DBI or a DBD uh, figure in their in their uh, literature and sometimes they don't give either, sometimes they give both, sometimes they just give DB. So, you know, take what it is and figure out the best you can is, what you, is kind of what you have to do. So what are decibels? Well, uh, a unit, it's a unit this, to measure intensity of sound or power level from electro, electrical signal. A change in the power factor of 10 is a 10 dB change, okay? So for every three dB increase in your signal, that increases your signal by two. So it's double it. So if you have 100, now it's doubled your, sig your signal theoretically to 200 watts, okay? Let me show you a chart on this and it'll show you the different levels and what the actual uh, power increase is or supposed to be. Okay, so how does gain of an antenna work? Well, so you hook up your, your antenna to your radio. Let's let's use FM as a, as a type of signal because it's if it's ten, if it's 10 watts it's 10 watts it's continuous okay all right so uh, unlike SSB which can go up and down it can be even more sometimes or less so it's not equal so let's just talk FM or AM either one would be work fine digital modes would so an antenna can't make power from nothing okay what what it can do is focus that power in a, in a direction and that's what a Yagi does. So when you add elements to a Yagi or you space the elements differently or whatever you do to it to change the characteristics of that antenna, basically what it's doing is focusing your signal, okay? So uh, let me put this in another way. So when you were a kid, you remember getting your magnifying glass out, focusing that sun on a real pinpoint on a piece of paper and burning that paper, right? Same thing, except that on an antenna, it's the opposite. The focus would be at your radio, or your antenna, and the signal V's out, and it gets wider as it goes in a direction. That's actually a, one of the things you look at when you look at antennas, what their, the width of the signal is. Okay, that's, that's in the specs usually. A good manufacturer will include that also. I have, a, I have a few Yaggies on my tower, and maybe I'll show you a picture of that right now. Okay guys, here is the Yaggies on my tower. The top one there is a seven element two meter Yagi. It's set up for sideband. The second one down is a homemade um, six meter five element LFA. And the bottom one, and yes, that one element is crooked. Uh, I caught it on a wire going up and we didn't catch it right away. And then I had everything put away before we put the tower back. You know, the tower was already put back up. So it works fine still, probably not as optimal. And then if you look, so that is my uh, TA33 Mosley. And if you look right, 
Right there in the middle is a, the rotor and that's a, twel a tail twister. Uh, pretty heavy duty. Not the most heavy duty, but uh, pretty good. And it's given me no problems at all. Let's just talk about my Tribander, which is a Mosley uh, TA33. Three elements, does three bands, 10, 15, and 20. So I usually aim my antenna northeast because from where I live, the, your signal kind of does an arch, okay, as it goes. Now, uh, pointing it northeast pretty much gets me New York, upper Canada maybe, all the way down to Florida. Now, when I actually make a contact, say I make a contact in Florida, and he's, he's not super strong, I will rotate my antenna to a better location for him, and a lot of times just by listening to him or I'll look it up, okay? So that do, that'll make my signal stronger because I'm, I'm taking that, that angle and I'm putting it towards his signal, all right? That make, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I know this is new for a lot of you. If you if you're, have never used a Yagi or any kind of antenna like that, this might be new stuff, but that's why I'm doing this video, okay? I'm trying to help out the new hams. I know this, may, this is old hat for some of you guys, but you know, hey, check it out. And if, uh, if you have anything to add, I, I don't know everything about all, the, all this stuff, but I know enough just to be dangerous, guys. But uh, no, I put it in the comments to be nice about it and use it as a teaching thing for for new hams who are, might be watching this video just to learn, okay? So what are some of the advantages of a gain antenna? Well, we, as we talked about, it directs your, your signal in a direction where most of your power is going out the front. Now, it also rejects signals to the back and to the sides. Now, the, the next best signal on your Yagi will be the back of it, as opposed to the front's the best and the back. The sides will be the least. And what you're doing is you're trying to reject signals. So a Yagi is really quiet. Maybe I can show you, I'll, I'll, I'll do my doublet versus um, my Yagi on 20 meters. and do a little clip here for you guys to see the difference in noise because it brings in less noise because I'm not bringing in 360 degrees of noise or more, you know, neither is a, a, a dipole really doesn't either, but it brings in more, okay? So they're usually quieter, so that's an advantage. So that rejection is called, like from the front to the back, is called front and back rejection. So I'll be, somebody may be an S9 on the front part of my antenna, but somebody on that same signal on the back of my antenna might only be S3, okay? So does that make sense to you guys? Hopefully it does. I'll try to, I'll try to show you an example of that. Um, I don't know, if, it's harder to do with my antenna because I have to rotate it. Some antennas you can actually push a switch, and we'll talk about that in, in uh, part two of this uh, this video, okay? So I'm gonna do a part one, part two, because I think there's way, really too much information to put in one short video. Okay, so is a gain antenna always the best choice for your location? No, it's not. Let's do a, a worst case scenario. Say you live at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and the walls are huge, it's not a long distance from where you're at. Uh, a Yagi may not be the best choice there because a lot of your your signal strength is gonna be sh shot into the, the face of the canyons, okay? Whereas a dipole, which has a higher or less, uh, higher elevation of the signal, is gonna get, may, might get you out better than a Yagi in that case. Now, if you were using two meter, let's say it's your two meter, and you're talking to somebody on the, on the top of the rim of the Grand Canyon, oh yeah, that's gonna help you because now you have direct sight, line of sight, and a Yagi antenna will help there, okay? It's line of sight, it, 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 it's hard to explain, but mountains can hurt you, okay? Being on top of a mountain might help you, all right? So that's the other case scenario. So you really have to take into account your location of where you are, where you live, and what is around you. Uh, sometimes if you're in an area that has big, tall buildings, I mean, I have a tree right behind me, I'm sure that hurts my signal, but I still get out. That's kind of, into New Zealand, Australia, but I can still get into New Zealand, Australia with no problem most times when the bands are great. So here's another question people will ask. What's better, a gain antenna or an amplifier? Well, it's not a, it's not a simple answer. Now this is a good question. Uh, so you have a gain antenna and you're comparing it to your dipole. And on your dipole, you can't hear these people, but you make contacts on your Yagi. Okay, so now you've noticed that your, your Yagi has, has gotten you out better 
and is receiving somebody else better. Okay, now let's hook up an amp without buying a, a Yagi or purchasing one, and now you're only using it with your dipole. Those people that may have heard you before on the Yagi might be able to hear you on that amplifier, but guess what? You still can't hear them. So is there a clear advantage? Now, your signal will be louder. It'll be louder to the people that you could hear, most likely. It's not, it's not a given science. I mean, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not a huge difference, but most of the time it is. But now, your antenna will also get you out louder because you've basically increased, it's kind of like putting an amplifier on your antenna. You know, if you if you got, let's say 6 dB gain, I think 6 dB gain was uh, four times. So say you have 100 watts out, theoretically you have 400 watts out now, right? Now whether it is or isn't, nobody, I don't think anybody really knows for sure, but it does help. So you won't hear those people coming back to you with your amplifier, okay? Some of the advantage to an amplifier, <laughs> some people, I'll, I hear this one all the time, I, I, have a, I have a tube amp, and this is mainly tube amps, it'll keep your shack warmer in the winter time. Mm, mine really doesn't, but if it did, not so great in the summertime, right? <laughs> now, if you have a Yagi, if you have a Yagi antenna, you're probably gonna have to have other parts to go with it also, just like you would with the amplifier to set in your shack. It'll take up, the amplifier will take up more room in your shack also. So, actually, so will the, uh, the Yagi if you put a rotator on it, because you'll have a controller for your rotator, but they're usually way, way smaller than an amplifier. But an amplifier, you may actually have to have a, a, a tower like I have here. Um, some, well, some, some you can put up on push-up poles and stuff, but it's not the, the best way to do it. And if it's temporary, that's one thing. But for a permanent use, uh, you probably want a tower. Now, some of the hex beams, uh, which is a gain antenna also, it's a two element basically. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that put those up on homemade poles that go up, but they're braced and, and also have, you know, guy lines for them also. So something to think about, if you do go either way, space or parts that you have to put it out for your antenna to, to rest on, okay? And you also will need a rotator most likely. If you, and I mean, nine times out of 10, I could set my Northeast and be good. But if I wanna to talk to China, Japan, or Australia, then I need to turn it, right? Okay. Okay, another thing, amps are expensive. Um, even a 100 watt amp, some amps, I mean, some of those 100 watt amps cost you a thousand bucks but so are Yaggies. And some of the more expensive Yaggies <laughs> that do a little bit more are as expensive as a amplifier. So that's kind of a wash most of the time. Um, and I'm talking buying new here. Uh, i tell you the truth, I only pay like 125 bucks for my, uh, my uh, Mosley, but I got it used. The thing's probably from the 1960s or 70s. Uh, I had to do a little bit of rebuilding, but it works great. Um, but you can't always find it used, okay? So in conclusion, well, while a, a gain antenna will work for most people, but you have to actually look at where you live, what your location is like, what's, what might be in your way. I mean, like I said, if you lived in the Grand Canyon, you probably isn't the best choice, but most places it's gonna work. My, I, have, I, live, I live in a valley here, and the valley is not like, I don't have 2,000, 3,000 foot mountains next to me, but they're, you know, five, 600 feet, but I do well. It does really well. Um, and I also run an amplifier with mine. That's the other thing. Later on, once you get one or the other, I would actually do the antenna probably first. I kind of did. I uh, kind of didn't. I didn't have it up right away. <laughs> but, uh, and then you add the amplifier. Now you've got a really great system, okay? So I hope this video helps, helps you understand gain antennas a little bit better. And hopefully I've explained it well enough for you and haven't confused you more than you were before. <laughs> hope not. But uh, if it has, uh, give me a, why don't you give me a thumbs up on that uh, down there in the bottom. And if, you do, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, hit all. That way you get all my future videos. I'm Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. Be safe and uh, hope to catch you guys on the airways, 73s.